Hello, hi Rajivji. Welcome you to amirasangeet.com and to chat and chai once again. Ah, hi Kamalji. Pranam, how are you? I'm very well, thank you Rajivji. How about you? Very well, thank you. So Rajivji, we do have a couple of queries here sent in by our listeners and a lot of tough questions added to those. But before we take these up, uh, would you like to add up anything, anything that's latest um, in the immigration uh, bill? Or even to say, uh, with the President Obama's visit to India, uh, do you think there would be any any change in the, uh, you know, the visas there in the uh, visa processes? Anything that you would see? Well, uh, as far as the new proposed bill S one six nine called I Squared Act, uh, Immigration Innovation Act is concerned. Uh, people had asked me on uh, on Twitter as well as some emails um, whether this bill is going to go forward and what is the time frame. And the answer is, first of all, we don't know how far this is going to go. Uh, there is resistance to legal immigration um, number increase from some members, some powerful members, both in Senate and the Hill, uh, um, Senate and the House. So. I don't know how long it will take for, or if it ever will become law. But as I pointed out in our last uh, conversation, this is a, a good start at least because it shows a um, bipartisan recognition of the trouble with legal immigration and uh, how some matters need urgent changes in the legal immigration area. So we don't know what the time frame is or whether this will become law, but we are encouraged by the recognition awarded to things that must change in legal immigration. Okay. On Obama's plan, um, the only thing that has happened is that government has asked for input from us, the stakeholders, everybody actually, that uh, please tell us how we can improve our uh, visa issuance and the process, petition approval processes, both in the U.S. and in the consulates. That's where we stand. Nothing major happening, nothing new to report. As far as President Obama's visit is concerned, I think it does help when, um, when, when two leaders can talk face to face and uh, bring out their concerns. And I am hoping that since uh, commerce expansion of um, wealth as well as business are concerns on both sides that the issue of immigration and dissolution of some of the borders to uh, to trade and commerce will be discussed and perhaps um, even some preliminary agreements uh, arrived at. I'm hoping, but I don't know what the agenda of the meeting is. And I guess we will not right. know until we see some public statements on that. That is definitely yeah. Uh, Raji, we now would, I think, want to some of the questions sent in here by Alice. Uh, first, there's a lot of questions, the detail that I take the question says, uh, my friend was born in India, holds non-Indian citizenship of another country, came to the United States in the year 2003 on a student visa, on two degrees, BBA and MBA from the United States by the year 2008, worked on H-1B for an employer on IT projects, stayed over in the country, undocumented, till date, since out of project work over an year of employment gap period. Now the questions are, number one, does the new immigration bill that the president mentions do you think that would cater for this case? Um, I don't think he means the bill. I think what he means is Obama's action, um, executive action. And the idea behind the executive action was to, to help people who have children who are uh, US citizens or green card holders. So it really does not apply to a case like this. Okay, now his second question follows. He says, in this period of settlement, if he were to get married to a U.S. citizen, would that help him to work officially in project? And what duration would that take in order for my friend to get employed officially? 
First of all, marriage to a U.S. citizen must be in good faith. It cannot be a green card marriage. To, to get married to somebody for immigration benefits um, and to try to misrepresent your marriage could land you in jail. It's a felony and the government is very serious about prosecuting this kind of fraud. Okay. I'm yeah, not saying I'm, sure I'm not in good, I'm, good faith. Right, this, right, uh, right. Person's been here for over eight years, so I'm sure. Well, I'm not implying that that the the yes, marriage is not in good faith. Yes. I'm merely stating the law and what to watch so, out. Yes. Okay, because the temptation is there. When I am stuck in a situation yes. where I don't have a way out, I want to make an honest living. I want to live so-called in the light instead of living in the shadows. Um, and the government is not doing, well, co Congress is not creating any laws to help people in this situation. The temptation is there. I want to regularize myself. Okay. So avoid that, number one. Number two, anyone who has lived in the U.S. Um, in unlawful presence status or unlawful presence um, position for years and years and years, if they get married to a U.S. citizen, as long as they don't travel outside USA before getting the green card, the following things will happen. Number one, they get employment authorization within about 90 days of applying for green card, which will be after okay. marriage. Number two, the green card should be in hand within a year, normally well within a year. Once you get the green card, you can travel as you please, but do not travel before you get the green card. That okay. is the answer to those, that, that particular question you asked. Okay. Uh, the final question is, uh, his friend holds the citizenship of another country. So he says a uh, holding the citizenship of another country other than India. Would that help in any process of green cards or towards citizenship? The answer is no. Um, first of all, it is not the country okay. of citizenship that determines the speed of the green card. It's the country of birth. For people who get married to U.S. citizen country... Rajiji, your voice is... Rajiji, your voice is breaking. Could you uh, just repeat the last line, please? All right. Uh, it is not the country of citizenship, but the country of birth that matters for green card. For people who get married to U.S. citizens, even the country of birth is irrelevant because there is technically no waiting involved. The green card is immediate. All right. Okay. So further, he says the uh, uh, general idea from Rajiji would be a welcome and a blessing. So he thanked you in advance, Rajiji. My pleasure. Uh, I appreciate the opportunity to be of assistance. The second query uh, from another listener says, mm, I am Bhavik Gandhi and I'm on OPT right now. I'm going to apply for H1 in April 2015. Before that, I was a F1 visa and I'm in the United States. For the last seven years. According to the new law, can I directly apply for the green card? Please advance. There is no change in the laws. Um, th there's nothing implemented yet. And even if, even if it were, nothing covers your particular situation at the moment. What tomorrow brings, I do not know, but today you are not covered by any such law. All right. So Rajivji, these were the queries we've uh, got on the need from our listeners. Very well, Kamalji. As always, thank you for having me and a pleasure to be with you. A pleasure to uh, speak with Rajivji and thank you so much for all your time and have a great day ahead. Bye-bye, man. Every other Thursday at 12.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, we host um, free community conference calls everybody is welcome to join some people post questions ahead of time you can take membership in our forums uh, all of the details are there on our website immigration.com you can take membership uh, ahead of time and um, you know it's instantaneous it happens right away and post your questions beforehand or you can just log in uh, the phone number in all are provided 202-800-8394 1230 Eastern Standard Time every other Thursday. We have uh, free apps for both Apple iOS platform for your 
iPhones and iPads as well as for Android. Just look for immigration.com, immigration.com, the period dot, and uh, the application should show up.